If God commands something in the Bible, and you know that he the same God that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he the same God that killed all the newborn babies in Egypt, he the same God that destroyed the earth with a flood and left only eight people. That's the same God that we dealing with. He told you to do something and you got the nerve to not obey it. That show that you don't fear God. So since we know that God is, a, he not playing no games. You know what I'm saying? He gave us response. He gave us commandments. Meaning we really don't got a choice. You know what I'm saying? We think we got a choice, but we really don't. You understand? What's up, bro? What's your name? Yeah. Yeah. You know we are here doing. Bro, I'm all right. I've been in it for long. He's six years old. It's Israel right here. Yeah. It's Zion right here. They, okay. they, they, got, they got the name, bro. All right. All right. So, so, okay. What you do, since you had the knowledge for so long, what are you doing with that knowledge? Right 33, 17. Watch this, bro. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, and verse 17. Come on. Consider that I labor not for myself only, uh -huh. but for all them that seek learning. Right. So you posted, you got the knowledge, right? God said you don't labor for yourself only, not just for you and your children. Guess what? All these little black kids here out here is your sons. Yeah. All these brothers out here is your brothers. You understand that? That's why we out here. We got the knowledge. We learned the knowledge six years ago just like you. Guess what? Guess what we out here doing though? We coming to people that don't even want to hear it. Whether they want to hear it or not, we gonna tell them because we understand the power that comes with this knowledge. It ain't for you to just keep to yourself. You understand that? So where you at in the knowledge? What, a, what like, where you at on your path to the kingdom of heaven? Yeah, hey, I'm a... Uh... I'm gonna ban the laws. I'm not perfect, but I'm gonna ban the laws on Saturday. I don't, I don't get out the house. I, we chilling. I mean, that's about it. I just ain't like I've been struggling to, cause I want to teach, just yeah. like y'all out here doing. Yeah. But it's been a struggle for me, man. It just, it just I'm really been a struggle. I'm gonna show you why you ain't got the teaching here. Get numbers 1538. Like you said, you keep the commandments, right? Yeah. But. Not really. I'm gonna watch this. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Come on. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel uh -huh. and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So God told Moses, command the children of Israel to make fringes in the borders of their garments. Freedom. Throughout their generations. Great. And that they put upon the fringe a border of a ribbon of blue. Right, so this is what distinguishes us from everybody else. God commanded that we put this on throughout what? Throughout your generation. Throughout your generations. But you, you got your generation, they a generation after you, right? God said, you supposed to have them on, they supposed to have them on. When they got kids, they supposed to have them on. That's a generational commandment right there. Right. Read on. Verse 39. Come on. And it shall be unto you for a friend Read. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. Right, so just that basic commandment applying that is going to help you keep all the other commandments. Good. That's what it's in place for. That's what the little fringes represent. 600 some laws, all the little dangly things represent all the commandments of the Lord. Good. You right. understand that? So that's something that you're not keeping. Now, Psalms 111 and verse 10. That's one of the basic first principles that we supposed to learn. If you ain't got that down pack, that's a reason why God ain't endowed you with the power to go out here and teach it. What tree would you got? The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? That means if God commands something in the Bible, and you know that he the same God that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He the same God that killed all the newborn babies in Egypt. He the same God that destroyed the earth with a flood and left only eight people. That's the same God that we dealing with. He told you to do something and you got the nerve to not obey it. That show that you don't fear God. 
the fear of God is the be the beginning of wisdom. Understanding who He is and what He got got the power to do. That's gonna have you. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get my mind right. That's the beginning of wisdom. Read on. A good understanding. A what? A good understanding. A good understanding to be able to teach, to be able to edify. Go to the scriptures and feed the flock. To get that good understanding, you gotta what? Have all they that do his commandments. You gotta do the commandments. You gotta apply the Bible to your life in every aspect first before you can go out here and teach and spread the word to others. That's why you haven't been able to get. You understand that? Now, when do the seven days start? Because you said you don't do nothing on seven days. When do it start? But right, it's we in it right now. Exactly, exactly. Now, was you trying to beat the sunlight or something, or you, you'd be going to the store on Friday night? No, I just got off work, and I had to go and pick them up, because I'm, I'm not with their mother, so yeah. I had to go pick them up, and I was headed straight to the crib, and okay. that was it. Okay. Take them a shower, lay it down, it's over. For sure. So you already know, no buying, no selling, no work. Oh, I ain't none of that. All of that from Friday, Sunday, and Saturday, Sunday. None of that. What else oh. you supposed to do on the Saturday? Leviticus 23, verse 3. Hey, sis, how you doing? We out here for you. You can come learn. We don't bite. Okay. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and verse 3. Six days shall work be done. Uh -huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. The seventh day is the Sabbath, right? Which is a bonus, correct? Read on. And holy convocation. A what? And holy convocation. A holy convocation. What is that? What is this? Coming together, right? Who you come together with on the set? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Get out. That's What's why the Lord got you together right now. What's the seventh day? What's the seventh day? Go to Hebrews 5 verse 12. You mentioned about teaching, right? Hebrews 5 verse 12. You mentioned about teaching. That's why you gotta come, you gotta congregate, you gotta learn, you gotta get built up. We all went through that process. I ain't just learned, I was an Israelite, and when it started doing this the next day, you see what I'm saying? I had to learn, I had to get taught. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter five and verse 12. Come on. For when the time he ought to be teachers. When you got the desire to teach your people, what gotta happen first? He had need. That one teach you again. You have need that somebody teach you again. You're not saying you when the seventh day So is. that means you should be your seventh day when you ain't working, when you ain't buying, when you ain't selling, when you ain't what doing nothing. That? You take yourself you to, to a learning something. institution where they teaching God laws and you learn God laws to be able to teach them yourself. You understand that? Right, I'm do That's this something that you, you got to start applying on the Saturday. day. Let me ask you something. You work? Yeah, I'm right. You work. Do we got it? Do we got it easy in America with our job as a black man? Do we got it easy? No, it's not at all. Yeah, especially if you and this truth. If you right, if you obey these laws. I mean, it, it's it's difficult. Right? So if we all be, give me Second Thessalonians one. Second Thessalonians one and seven. If we all going through hell, we all being oppressed day in and day out. But we all understand we got the Sabbath day to rest. Should we be doing it ourselves or should we be doing it as a collective? Yeah, as a collective. I mean, exactly, yeah, exactly. I mean. Watch this, read this. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1 and verse 7. Come on. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. So God said to you that are troubled, rest with us. Rest with us. We all go through the same thing. But iron sharpening iron, we're going to build each other up. Two is better than one. You understand? God said, how pleasant. Give me that in Psalms 133, verse 1. The fact that you see all of these black men out here with the same shirt on, the same pants on, the same boots, it's true when we moving in the same mind and the same spirit. Right. Yeah. This couldn't happen from no Facebook post. Right. You know what I'm saying? This couldn't happen from no phone calls and texts. We had to come around and build with each other. That's right. We had to learn together. We had to build together camaraderie. That's how you see these men in order. We all on one accord. That's beautiful to God. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 133 and verse 1. Come on. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is Read. for brethren to dwell together in unity. Because for so many years, we've been enemies with each other. We've been each other's worst enemy. We kill each other more than a white man do. And we know the white man hate us. You see what I'm saying? So God said, I love it to see 
my Israelite men have enough sense to come together and enjoy one another's company. God said that pleases him. He looking down, he like, man, they finally getting it together. You see what I'm saying? So don't you want to please God? Uh, you already know it, yeah. All right then, exactly. well, that, what you going to start doing on the Sabbath? Yeah, I mean, you got to come together. You got to start coming together. Now let me ask you this, are you married? No, I'd say I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm, I, I'm, 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 I, I don't believe in marriage. You know what I'm saying? What you mean you don't believe in marriage? No, I, don't, I, I ain't going to say I don't believe in marriage. I'm saying the condition of the world right now, I don't see it. I mean, looking at the women, the landscape, I mean, why would I get married? So I mean, you celibate? Yes, I ain't, yeah. The last person I had sex with was my baby mother. Okay. I don't even remember the last time there was. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, okay. That's what's up. So, you understand that if you do lay down with a woman, we gotta, we gotta come behind them. If yeah. you lay down with a woman, it's fine. Exactly. I mean, marriage. I mean, marriage. That's, that's okay. what that is. I okay. mean, that's why I'm, I ain't had sex with no since my baby mother. For sure. For sure. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'll be, I'll be thinking, like, I'm probably trying to go, I mean, die celibate, the way it's looking, because I just can't lay down with anybody. I mean, yeah. I just but can't do that. Watch this. So Rock 26 and verse 3. Watch this, bro. Once you really start walking in the commandments of God, really devoting your life to this, guess what God will do for you? Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26 and verse 3. Read. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. God said if you fear the Lord, he will give you a good wife. Right. Believe it or not, we all got wives out of this same wicked world, but we ain't complaining. You know what I'm saying? Our wife and I here twerking ass, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being shameless. Nah, she sub they submissive. They quiet. They know their place. They know their role. We got the power to get women in order. That's what a lot of us don't understand. Right. We think the black woman is so far gone and we can't do nothing with her, but once you learn these laws, you got the power to tame that dad, tame that dragon. Right. Some of them, you know what I'm saying? Some of them. But we don't understand the power that we got once we got this knowledge. Right. But once you fear the Lord, the God will bless you with a good wife. That's what the Bible says. God will bless you with a good wife, bro. Yeah, real. but I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I really, I, I didn't gave up on that part. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't, it, don't, it ain't looking like I'm trying to be perfect. Like, that's my goal, be perfect, and I really, I feel like a woman gonna hit me, you know what I'm saying? No, I ain't, I ain't saying that you're wrong. I'm yeah. just letting you know that it's possible to get a good wife if you feel yeah. But, if you wanna abide and be for the rest of your life, bro, that's, what, that's really what's, that's commendable. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. For real. If you able to do that for real, bro, you are, you a real soldier of the most high God. That's, I, that's I, right. I applaud yeah. that. For real. Yeah, it's gonna be Get that in uh, Matthew 19, verse 12. And Christ said that it was gonna be some brothers like that. It might be you. Matthew 19, verse 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 12. Read. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. Right, so a eunuch is somebody that don't got a penis. So we said there's some eunuchs that's born, you know, with that situation messed up. Alright, read on. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And you know like Daniel, uh, when he was in uh, Babylon, right? Yeah. They had eunuchs, so if you was like the king's security guard, you know he had a queen, princess, and all of that. They cut our eyes off so we wouldn't go in there and wreck they women. So you got some eunuchs that's forced, they get it chopped off by the oppressor. But watch this, read on. But there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs, for the kingdom of heaven's sake. But it's gonna be some men that don't use their rod at all because they know they can't deal with a woman if they really want to stay on the path to the kingdom. You understand? You might be one of them, a brother that I'm gonna stay celibate or whatever because I know a woman gonna distract me and take me off course. You understand? So that's, that's biblical. Like I said, it ain't nothing wrong with that, but you really, you know, you're gonna have to be strong in the Lord. Yeah, it's gonna be strong. Yeah. You gotta be strong in the Lord. Now, these, these both, uh, you got most, most of these dogs. Oh, yeah. These, 
teach them. I own the two. Okay, then you own the two. So what did you teach them? I teach them. I teach them lots. I got, I got uh, the valve. You know, you play you ever heard the valve experience? The valve experience. Yes, yeah, this is the valve on CD. Okay, okay, okay. Now, do they have they ever took the feast of Passover for example? No, I, I, I ain't yeah. Watch this, Exodus 13 started about 7. Oh. The book of Exodus, chapter 13 and verse 7. Yeah. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, uh -huh. and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Great. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Great. And thou shalt show thy son in that day. Thou shalt what? Show thy son in that day. Right, so that's, you know, like most kids, they know about Christmas. Santa Claus and all of this pagan idolatry. They know about Easter and the Easter Bunny. They know about Easter egg hunts. They know about Thanksgiving, the pilgrims in the Indian. They know about all that garbage, right? Yeah. God said he got holidays that represent our glory, our deliverance out of captivity. And God said when you keep it and when you know about it, you do what? And thou shalt show thy son. Show what? Show thy son. God command you to show your son about these holidays. The biblical holidays. So they won't be, Daddy, we can't celebrate Christmas. It's way bigger and better. We just read this seven days. But I grew up waiting all year for one damn day. Right. You know what I'm saying? To open presents. All God holidays be one day, two days, three days, seven days, eight days. They bigger and better in its mode. Our children would, would prefer God laws if we taught them God laws. You understand that? And that's our responsibility. That's what we gotta do. We gotta show our sons the laws of God because they the next generation. Watch this Psalms 102 and verse 18. Psalms 102 verse 18. Watch this, bro. The book of Psalms, the 102 and verse 18. This shall be written for the generation to come. It shall be what? Written for the generation to come. So the Bible is not just written for us. You know what I'm saying? The, the grown adult men that got the minds to comprehend it. No, it's written for the generation to come. What's going to happen when we leave the earth? You know, it's only it's only getting more wicked in the sense of what they putting into the earth, yeah. what they putting on TV, the radio, social media is only getting worse. So what they what they gonna do when it's when wickedness is at its peak and you gone? You understand that? This is written for the generation to come. Read on. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. And the people which shall be created, meaning our seeds that we making right now, is supposed to praise the Lord. You understand that? But the only way that's gonna happen is if we teaching them the commandments. We instilling in them God laws. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Without. Proverbs 22 verse 6. For the real. Because you know like, hey, a lot of us was raised in a Christian church. Uh, some people raised their kids Muslim. Some people raised their kids with different ideologies and stuff like that, right? But once we get to a certain age, you know, we be like, uh, I want to see the world for ourselves. But God said that his laws got a different power to it. Watch what God said, read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse six. Come on. Train up a child in the way he should go. So God said, train up a child in the way that he should go. Meaning in the laws of God. Understanding who he is, how to treat a woman, how to love his brother, how to honor God in his high holy days. You understand? That is uh, what, that's the, the way that he should go. And then what? And when he is old. And when he get older, when he hit that age, when most kids want to explore and do everything under the sun, the one that you taught the way that he should go, what's going to happen with him? He will not depart from it. He going to stick to it because he understand he didn't experience the power of God's laws and the peace that it brings to our lives. You understand that? That's why you got to instill that in your sons. God commanded us to show our sons the truth. For real. That's the only way that we gonna keep righteousness going, bro. We at war. Give me uh, Ephesians 6 verse 12. You know, every time 
you get on the social media, right? If you get on Facebook right now and you simply scroll up at the top of the screen, it's gonna be rainbows, a man kissing a man. So you see what I'm saying? It's everywhere. It's in all the cartoons, it's in all the movies, right. it's on a little subtle command. Even when you watching some righteous, guess what? An ad gonna pop up with some gay stuff. Right. It's everywhere. Everywhere. But watch this, read what you got. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 12. Come on. Yep. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So, because you know what? Black people be talking about, like the people that we go to, right, that's lost. They be like, man, we need to get some guns. We need to kill the white man or whatever. If, we, if every last white person in the world died right now, what would black people do? How long would we last without the white man? What, what would happen with black people? All the white people die right now. What black folks gonna do? I mean, today, we ain't gonna keep them laws. I mean, it's gonna end up bad, I mean. I'm I mean, saying that if it happened right now at this moment, think about it's it. Gonna, it's gonna be bad. It's bro. gonna be I bad, mean. bro. It's gonna be bad. So it ain't about no flesh and blood war. It ain't about us killing all them right now. That's not the war that we fighting. But what? But against principalities. But against what? Principalities. Because they instilling principalities in our children. You know what most young people say to us? You can't judge me. Uh, I wear what I want. God love me the way I am. Da, da, da. All of this is principalities that they instilling in our children. Because we not teaching them what God said. So a white man could just tell them anything and pretend like it's in the Bible and they gonna run with it. You know how many people try to tell us, ain't come as you are in the Bible? Ain't don't judge in the Bible? Ain't, no it ain't. You see what I'm saying? But them the principalities that they able to instill in our children if we not showing them the truth. Right. Read them. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. Yo, you got an enemy and he wants your sons in darkness. You have been enlightened, you know the light. So you got the ultimate responsibility, and not just for them, like I said, all these young black kids, your sons out here. You got the responsibility to let your light shine so they can know the correct direction to walk in. Because there's no other way they gonna know unless you shine that light. For real, read them. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. You can't just walk up to the man that's putting all this evil on the, on the television, exposing all this evil to your sons when they hop in the car, when they with their mama that's on the way. You can't just walk up to him. He in high places. He behind a hundred like those trying to scheme and know how to destroy your boys, how to destroy our people's mind. You understand? That's the warfare. That's the warfare. How we gonna fight spiritual wickedness? Watch this, Romans 7 and 14. This is how we gonna spite spiritual wickedness, bro. Romans 7 and 14, read out that. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 14. Uh -huh. For we know that the law is spiritual. The what? The law is spiritual. So God said, just like they coming with all this spiritual wickedness, my law is spiritual. You understand? So it would behoove us to make sure that we giving our people and instructing our children God's law. That's right. That's why you gotta, you gotta step up. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get with the program because time is running out, bruh. Time is running out. And God said he gonna reward every man according to his work. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. 
IUIC, we deliver the truth.